In June 2001, Elon Musk was exploring what's next after PayPal. He saw enough smart people are working on the internet already. For him, it was the call of space. He moved from Palo Alto to Los Angeles, and LA was home to the world's top aeronautics thinkers. Musk's first interaction was with members of a nonprofit group called the Mars Society. What stunned Robert Zubrin, the founder of Mars Society, was the reply from someone named Elon Musk, whom no one could remember inviting. Elon Musk gave them a check for $5,000, and thus began the journey of SpaceX. Here's what Robert Zubrin had to say about Elon Musk. He's not Mother Teresa. He is not without selfishness, but his selfishness is in the form of Henry V. In Shakespeare's play, he is selfish for glory. Indeed, Elon Musk is arguably the most ambitious person in the world, and that's his X factor. He learns, he builds, he fails, and he repeats. There's no giving up. He'll do whatever it takes. Raptor is the best example of that. After a decade of development, all of Elon Musk's changes in SpaceX Raptor to shock the whole industry. And find out everything about it right here today in this episode of Alpha Tech. An advanced rocket engine design project named Raptor, burning hydrogen and oxygen propellants, was first publicly discussed by SpaceX's Max Vozov at the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics Commercial Crew Cargo Symposium in 2009. At that time, SpaceX had a few staff working on the Raptor upper stage engine, then still an LH2 LOX concept at a low level of priority. However, in November 2012, Musk announced a new direction for the propulsion division of SpaceX, which was towards developing methane-fueled rocket engines. He further indicated that the Raptor concept would now become a methane-based design and that methane would be the fuel of choice for SpaceX's plans for Mars colonization. Because of the presence of water underground and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere of Mars, methane, a simple hydrocarbon, can easily be synthesized on Mars using the Sabatier reaction. In situ resource production on Mars has been examined by NASA and found to be viable for oxygen, water, and methane production. The development Raptor engine with 200 bars chamber pressure had undergone 1,200 seconds of test fire testing in ground test stands across 42 main engine tests, with the longest being 100 seconds, which is limited by the capacity of the ground test propellant tanks, and that was in 2017. The first version of the flight engine intended to operate at chamber pressure of 250 bars with the intent to raise it to 300 bars at a later time. In the BFR update given September 2018, Musk showed a video of a 71-second fire test of a Raptor engine. So this is the Raptor engine that will, will power BFR, both the, uh, the ship and the booster. It's the same engine. And this is a, a, approximately a 200-ton thrust engine uh, that's uh, aiming for uh, roughly a 300 bar or 300 atmosphere chamber pressure. Um, and depending upon, if, if you have it at a high expansion ratio, has the potential to, be, to have an, a specific impulse above 380. Since 2019, the Raptor that was used on Starhopper SN5, SN6, SN8, SN9, SN10, SN11, Raptor version 1.0, and the version of Raptor used on SN15, 20, and B4, Raptor version 1.5. But now SpaceX is ready for the first Starship orbital flight, and this time it's Raptor 2. Raptor 2 is still a methane liquid oxygen engine, but that's where the similarity ends. By removing a large number of components, SpaceX has made the Raptor 2 more flame and heat proof, a clear step towards SpaceX's goal of removing all engine shrouding from the booster, which would decrease the booster's mass by almost six tons. And that's a clear example of Musk, the best part is no part mantra. Another change made to Raptor 2 to further decrease the engine's mass is the removal of the torch igniters in the main combustion chamber. Instead of relying on redundant torch igniters, the well-mixed hot oxygen gas and hot CH4 gas act hypergolic under the high temperature and pressure of the main combustion chamber. 
Raptor 2 also has fewer flanges than the original versions of Raptor. Flanges are great during prototyping when parts need to be swapped out, but they increase mass and increase pressure losses throughout the engine. Now that the design is more stable, SpaceX has been able to remove many flanges on the engine, going as far as hoping to remove all flanges on Raptor 2.5, which will further increase thrust to 250 tons and debut on Booster 12. The most fundamental change was opening the throat, allowing more propellant to flow through the engine to increase thrust. However, this change decreases the expansion ratio. That's the ratio between the area of the nozzle exit and the area of the throat. The higher the expansion ratio, the more work the nozzle does to convert high pressure into high velocity, increasing the specific impulse of the engine. And finally, the Raptor 2's pre-burner controls are no longer spread all over the engine like in Raptor 1. They're instead in their own box. This simplification makes manufacturing easier and means the shroud could be removed, allowing for more movement in gimbling engines. The question now is why does SpaceX keep changing Raptor? Simply, to get more powerful engines. Raptor has gained a significant amount of thrust. Raptor 1 produced 185 tons, while Raptor 2 produces 230 tons of thrust. Besides from the start, Raptor 2's purpose was to make future Raptors easier, faster, and cheaper to manufacture. In 2021, Elon Musk warned Raptor engine production is a disaster that puts SpaceX at risk of bankruptcy. And at that point, the cost of the engine was stated to be approaching a million dollars. The ultimate goal is to eventually reduce the cost of Raptor 2 production to $1,000 per ton of thrust or $230,000 at Raptor 2's current target of thrust. All of this is aimed at the speed of production. Beginning with its first delivery in February 2018, SpaceX produced the first 100 Raptor 1 engines in about 36 months. In the first 11 to 12 months of Raptor 2 production, SpaceX has delivered 200 engines. That translates to at least six times the average throughput, and the true figure is even higher. Such a high rate, likely making Raptor one of the fastest produced orbital class rocket engines in history, is required because SpaceX's next generation Starship rocket needs a huge amount of engines. Truly unlike anything else in human history, it won't be achieved by using regular rocket ships. And it definitely won't be achieved by using regular rocket engines. The Raptor engine and the Raptor 2 that's now being developed are the key pieces of SpaceX's future. It has a radical amount of power cultivated in ways that haven't been used before. With the science and reusability factor, the Raptor engine is what space engineers have always dreamed of but have never been capable of achieving. It will save money, it will save energy, and it will help massive vessels like Starship transcend our atmosphere and head straight for Mars. When you understand just how major and consequential the Raptor engine is not only for SpaceX, but also for the future of all space travel, you can comprehend why Musk is pushing his company so hard to turn these engines out at such a high speed. And that about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.